Hello friends, let's learn about universe optimization, continuing to our course unit 14. So in this way, uh, video we will learn about various techniques about uh, universe optimization that is to, uh, related to the performance of the queries and the reports. So how we can optimize the universes using parameters. So this is one thing means we, we should configure uh, connection parameters uh, while creating it. So connection configuration parameters is one thing where we, when creating or editing connection, we can set up certain parameters uh, that will optimize uh, the connection against the database in use. So uh, we can have the query time shortened by optimizing the connection. So connection configuration parameters to optimize universe, we can define the duration of the connection in the to the pool, define how uh, business objects product respond when database resources are not available. Uh, we can define the size of the array fetch then configuration parameters for relational connection which is again for connection pool mode, array phase size and uh, login timeout. So when uh, when we set these options means all these options we have mentioned here means while creating a connection we have this pool timeout, array phase size, array bind size, login timeout. We will see, we'll be saying in detail what, what this means uh, exactly. So this is a uh, while we create the connection we get this option to set up um, all these parameters. We can add the parameter as well in the next screen. So what is connection pool mode? So it refers to how long a universe designer or end user uh, using the reporting tool remains connected to the underlying data source. So it is the time means how long it should uh, remain connect. So uh, there are options like disconnect after each transaction means if we, uh, someone is running the report or uh, running the query then it should disconnect. So that is uh, one transaction if completed, keep the connect connection active for, uh, we can specify some time where for that particular duration or period of time, we can keep the session active. We can keep the connection active during whole time is all the time is when the user is logged in, we can keep it active uh, and full time out is length of time to keep the connection uh, open. So array phase size is one thing means we specify the maximum number of rows authorized uh, with each phase from the database. Whenever the query is hit at one go means how many rows it should phase. That is array, array phase size. So if you, if you have array phase size as, uh, is equal to 25 then query returns 100 rows. Means if you have the query uh, returning 100 rows then uh, connection will retrieve the data in 4 pages of 25 rows each. So 24, uh, 25 rows each time it will fetch, so that will become 100 rows. We can deactivate the set uh, RFA size uh, if we are making it equal to 1. Then login timeout, we can specify the number of minutes that must be spent to establish a connection before an error message is displayed. So we have key and values properties, JDBC driver properties, where we can specify that um, uh, values for the JDBC driver properties and um, that driver is selected for the connection. So um, we can define the value for more than one property separated by uh, commas. The okay, query script parameters is again one parameters which we, we can set up uh, while creating a relational connection. So universe allows reporting tools such as WebE to generate complete SQL statement to pass to a data source in order to return the accurate reporting. So whenever we create any report, in the web intelligence tool like webby it, it, it creates an sql uh, based on the objects we are using and that sql query will be uh, passed to the database to run it so we can um, at query time we can use uh, the values uh, that can be found in the following order that values in the business layer if it is set values in the data foundation if it is set and the default value so that that we we can specify Okay, so this was about uh, while creating the connection. Now it coming to the design best practices means so what are the uh, different different best practices we should consider while creating or uh, designing a universe. So the first one, first thing is we need to uh, identify the requ reporting requirements and we for that involve users as well. The second one is identify the data source relevant to the universe we are creating and ensure that there is a representative data available. So. Relevant data source is one thing we need to identify. And insert tables into our data foundation one at a time, not in bulk. So if you want to add like 20 tables, don't do it in a bulk. 
just add the tables in one by one so that we will get to know means which tables are getting added or something like that means uh, insert joins and define cardinal cardinalities so defining cardinalities manually it's it's a good practice uh, and you will get to know means if it is correct or not by, because sometimes uh, the tool automatically detect the cardinalities it may not correct so for that purpose we need to um, check it ma manually lay out the data foundation with cardinal facing same direction and always are in stables logically in a structure window so we should be if you organize it uh, logically in a structure window so that it will be helpful for visualizing the loops and context add relevant comments to data foundation means wherever possible for the uh, full uh, objects we are or tables we are adding add relevant comments so that it will be easy to understand means uh, to make the changes later changes we need to build the relevant objects so we need to keep the business layer business focus when the naming objects so it should be not like means uh, technical names it should be a business focus uh, names to the folders or objects we are uh, creating in the business layer then coming to do not um, normalize we use multi dimensional modeling instead uh, so always check integrity the tool item, uh, itself uh, gives the function to check integrity so you can use that use aggregate awareness so that will uh, improve the performance of the queries use aggregates sql functions on business layer measures so this is one uh, one um, thing which we need to use set the connection parameter that uh, already i have mentioned is how we can set the connection parameter so that is we need to specify we can remove unnecessary allowees a list of values so which are not required add any other elements to build such as filters and navigation paths so uh, if required means filters and navigation paths should be uh, required and test the inverse so in any uh, we can build some queries in sap when uh, view and user querying tools such as web view or dashboards and we can test the inverse uh, best practices for folders and objects means while creating folders and objects in a business layer it should uh, there are some best practices so let's understand that so we can use minimum possible objects in the business uh, layer so 500 max allowed so too many objects may slow down the time required for user to find the object so uh, it's it's like means keep the 500 maximum uh, uh, element there create condition objects when possible so that it will restrict the data means if, which is not required always type a, a description of the uh, object so description is very much required means when we creating the uh, objects consider putting the full folder path and object name in the objects uh, description dimensions measures and attributes object should be within their logical folder so it should be like a logical or arrangement of the folders and um, that objects belong to that particular folder so that would be easy to for, for identifying and uh, as a business perspective and format objects uh, and measures within the business layer okay while creating joins in the data foundation we should have uh, some of the best practices uh, first one is avoid building data foundation with jo no joins between tables don't stand alone uh, don't keep stand alone tables in the data uh, data foundation uh, to join with them uh, join the tables with some other tables wherever possible optimize database performance by shortcut uh, using shortcut joins maybe shortcut joins if required means we can use that will inform, improve the performance and avoid or outer joins which is um, you know, wherever possible we should avoid outer joins because it will have the negative impact effect on the performance since uh, outer joins returns more uh, data rows so um, uh, and if there are no index and in, then indexes are uh, in the databases then it, then it is a problem for uh, when we use uh, outer joins okay so that that's all about this uh, inverse optimization uh, we learn about various uh, points related to connection parameters connection um, uh, options uh, then uh, about inverse design practices uh, folders and uh, joins practices so let's understand what i have uh, covered what do the connection mool, uh, pool mode of uh, refer to so what should you follow while base your uh, inverse design and implementation so a connection pool mode is uh, refers to how long the inverse designer or end user using the reporting tools I mean connected to the underlying data source and uh, we should follow the base practices while uh, designing our emails So that's it. Uh, that's all from uh, this uh, video. I hope you have understood this. Means uh, 
the concepts related to the universe uh, optimization if you have any questions then please put it in comment section if you like my video then please like it and subscribe to my channel as well thank you